Hey everybody, welcome back to Breakfast with Bob from Clash Daytona. My name is Bob Babbitt. We're brought to you by Toyota, Captiva Spine, Foundation Risk Partners, USA Triathlon. Joining us, Mr. Brent McMahon, four-time Ironman champion, five sub-eights, two-time Olympian. Man, you got a resume. How you doing, Brent? Oh, I'm doing really well. Doing really well. Looking forward to something new. First time here. Uh... Yes, this is new, right? And yeah. now, when was the last time you raced? Uh, well, I've actually just I've got some racing in this fall, but okay. uh, been, there's kind of been big periods of uh, no racing with COVID and being uh, up in Canada. So, okay. so I've, uh, I was at Oceanside before this and then the LA triathlon just before that. Oh, you did so, LA? Yeah. The Olympic distance. Yeah. Right? Olympic non-drafting, back to your roots. Yeah, man. How what fun was that? It, it was awesome, actually, because uh, that was one of the original non-drafting races that I, I did. Uh, well, I think nine years ago now. So, so New York, Min uh, Lifetime in, in, yeah. in Minnesota, Minnesota, Chicago, yeah. L.A., yeah. all so, those cool ones. Yeah, so I figured, hey, you know what? Back I to your roots. I haven't done a lot of racing this year, so let's get a few in while I was down here. And L.A. was one of those. So. How'd you do? Uh, I was ninth, so it was uh, it was it was a good kind of wake up. Yes. It was uh, after a big block of training and obviously not a lot of fast racing. Right. Um, it, it was uh, a chance to improve uh, for the next weekend at Oceanside. So I went from the some of the slowest transitions and uh, second packed swim to fastest uh, group in the swim, fastest uh, transitions in Oceanside. So. And how'd you finish Oceanside? Uh, I was sixth. So. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Moving forward. So moving forward. I like it. Well, it's funny because what we've seen the last couple of years is just the bike ride the bike cycling has gone to another level you know cam worth coming in and and you've seen this over time right mm -hmm. when you, you're always some uber cyclist comes in and, and changes the game mm -hmm. and and how have you been doing a ton of more indoor well obviously you have canada you're doing indoor training what have yeah. you been doing to, to try to match what these guys are doing? Um, well, you know, I think, yeah, fortunately enough, I, I live in Victoria, BC. So, okay. so we actually, you know, can ride all year round outdoors. Oh, so, good. so I don't, I don't have to do a ton of indoor mm. training. Um, I do it, um, obviously cause it is wet and cold. Right. Um, but yeah, you know, the interesting is, is uh, you know, I think there's always been strong cyclists, but what's changing is those strong cyclists that can run, can run now. <laughs> And, and they all swim well. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so so it's not just kind of single or dual sport athletes raising the game. It's now, you know, guys are coming in that are really strong cyclists, but then can run really, really well. Yeah. And um, so that's exciting for the sport to you no know, push everybody's level up. And, um, you know, and, you know, I, I've kind of done all things triathlon from super sprint all the way up to Ironman. And so it's it's been neat seeing the evolution and the ebb and flow of talent and crossover and stuff like that so very cool and you i mean you did the second ever olympics right in, in athens in 2004 yeah and the birthplace of the olympics that's that's pretty cool yeah it was awesome it's been it's been an amazing exciting career where yeah. like i said I, i've been able to try everything and do everything and um, yet here I am in Daytona, the first time on a NASCAR track and uh, the first time going to be riding around in circles. So You know what, I, I think what we've seen this last couple of years from an evolution perspective with the PTO coming in and putting an, an infusion of dollars, uh, that Collins Cup racing was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. uh, and then what we're having here, obviously Super League, what Mac yep. has done, and then this is it's a different game well it's innovation you know it's you know you can't rely on on the same things endlessly you got it right. you got to create you got to do something new exciting and right. and so it's great to see a, a few different groups of people from um you know the crowd here at clash putting on these types of events yes. to challenge group putting on different yep. events in different places and super league and um, you know, so it's really giving us athletes an opportunity to, to experiment with our own talents, yes. um, but also find new challenges. And for yeah. me, I, I've been racing professionally for 20 years. So finding, finding new challenges is what keeps me going. Yeah. So it's, it's super exciting. Well, and, and what's fun about that is like you said, you just did LA try, which is one of our old school events, which is non-drafting you right across the city. Mm -hmm. And then you're coming out to the racetrack, here, <laughs> yeah. right? And then you're doing Oceanside, which has been around again forever. And this is a totally new concept yeah from have you gotten on the track yet yeah i was there i spent an hour on it today what do so, you think uh, it, it's super cool and, and getting obviously when you get to the corners and you look up <laughs> that bank and you're like 
how how do the how do the cars obviously they have to drive really fast in order to stick to that that corner but <laughs> you know and, and you know being on a cycling track it's kind of the same thing but but just the scale of it like how tall and and how wide and how long this course is is you know and then just these stands even behind us is, this uh, this we were here in february of 2020 for the daytona 500 oh, there's wow. 180,000 people Jeez. in this these stands yeah it's, it's that, that's just insane it's, un it's unbelievable yeah but when you look at this and we're, they're talking about they're obviously tracks up in canada mm -hmm. and they're talking about 15 of these events around north america yeah it, between now and or in probably the next three years mm -hmm. can, you, can you see people uh the canadian folks digging this as well well yeah they've actually done races that have done an ironman on on the oh, really yeah on the montreal oh. um, f1 circuit sweet um, so it's it's not entirely new to us um love it so you know it's it's you know with between f1 and or yes. uh, NASCAR tracks, there's just tons of opportunity there. And, and, and what's really cool is, is being able to film it and create a TV show is obviously super easy and <laughs> they can do a very good job of it. Yeah. But then live watching is also super cool. And you know, I was at the airport yesterday and, and just met a, an age grouper and he was just super stoked to be here to race. But then he's like, but I'm really excited that I actually get to watch you guys. Yes. You know, because at typical Ironman events, we're all racing together at the same time. Yeah. You know, whereas, you know, here they can actually do their race in the morning and then they can come and watch the actual pro event and see it kind of firsthand. And he said, I'm just, it's really cool to be able to stand on the course and watch you guys go by and obviously we're going to be going right. by 25 times they're going to be over and over, <laughs> over and over, and over again, again. Yeah. and there'll be headwind there'll be tailwind there'll be sidewind there'll be all sorts of, of 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 different things yeah um when uh when they came here for just just watching it last year you're you're just thinking okay it's you know Alistair Brownlee's here and you everybody was just going okay that's we know who's going to win mm -hmm. there's a guy who's been doing this forever you can look at all the resumes you yeah. want, but what you don't see is that guy's got a little knee issue and this guy's got an Achilles problem and this guy hasn't been training. And mm -hmm. so you, you've known better than to look at the start list and even give a crap, right? Well, yeah, or, or you, you know, you can kind of, you can file them down and you can go, okay, this is where, you know, if they have a good race is where they should be, right. you know, and you know, these are their talents, but you know, like we're d discussing, th this is a different type of race. It's a different format. It's a bigger draft zone. It's 20 meters. Yes. It's completely flat. Yes. So it is like riding a trainer. And so, you know, it's it's a different type of riding even. So yeah. how many guys actually sit down and put out their half Ironman pace? Yes. Exactly the same for 80 kilometers in a row no hills yeah. no stops nothing and yeah. you know so you're gonna have to be able to you know ride in your position and ride at a certain power very consistently and so some guys are suited to that and some aren't and then trying to run off of the exact same position for you know almost two yeah. hours it's it's it changes it's not your normal race so as a guy who's had five sub eight hour ironman races what do you look at as your best race um, probably, probably my best race, um, obviously it was one of the fastest was Ironman Brazil, um, yes. where I almost broke the world record at the time. And, uh, now that world record is just, <laughs> seven twenty one. it's just crazy. <laughs> um, you know, so, you yeah. know, to, to, to have that as one of my best races and then see where it's at now is, is, is pretty awesome. Um, yeah. but you know, it, it, not necessarily about the time. It was just about the, the feeling and the execution. Right. Um, you know, when you're looking at seven to eight hours of pushing yourself, uh, it's, it's really hard to foresee yourself feeling good and strong and positive the entire time. Right. Um, and that's, a, there's just, that's just how it goes in an Ironman. There's ebbs sure. and flows, yeah. but every now and then you get that <laughs> one race <laughs> where unicorn it, it shows just, up. yeah, it just <laughs> goes and, and that might happen once in a career or, you know, a few times. And, you know, it, it's, it's that feeling and that ability to keep pushing yourself for such a long duration. And yes. so for me in Brazil, that's, that's what it was, was just the culmination of a lot of great training, but then just executing and being able to push yourself, which was amazing. So going from the Olympics and going from London, which was at, um, amazing, the mm -hmm. London Olympics was, was unbelievable. Yeah, they the did 85,000 people in the States, it was, it was yeah. crazy. Going to that and transitioning to longer distance, uh, was that hard for you? 
Um, well, I, I, ha I had done some non-drafting races. Mm. So like I said, yeah, I did some, some of the, of the not, yeah, Toyota Cup races Olympic, yeah. and stuff like that between Olympic cycles. Um, I actually won my first 70.3 uh, was in New Orleans mm. in 2009. Okay. Um, so again, that was, you know, after the Beijing Olympics, which I wasn't selected right. to. So I went and tried some different racing and um, and obviously I won. So, um, so I knew I was going to be, you know, you'll be transitioning at yeah, some point, yeah, yeah, going to be doing it and I was going to be good at it. Um, and so for me, it was just when my Olympic journey was going to be over. And so that, you know, for me that I made that decision, to go to London. And then so there was no thought of, Hey, I'm going to try to do Rio. No, no. Okay. Um, because after not being selected, uh, for Beijing, it, it meant I had another four years to go to the next one. It's not like, okay, uh, I yeah. didn't go to Kona. Right. I'll go, go next, next year. year. Right. Um, it's four years. And that's what's so hard for Olympic athletes is, you know, if, if everything doesn't line up and you don't make it to that Olympics, then You're then it's another, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a four years. And that's a long time to yeah. commit. Well, it's been in a career. Yeah, yeah. And and, these careers are, I mean, you're sort of the anomaly mm -hmm. that somebody's is still doing it after all these years. But for a lot of folks, you know, you go four or five years, that's a career. Yeah. And so when you start saying, oh, I'll just wait another four. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially with the COVID year. Yeah. Right now, then it was like five years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, so, you know, so, yeah, I, I reflect on those things. And I, I have friends that are, you know, Olympians now. And, um, you know, and I talk to them a lot as yes. they were, you know, questioning, yeah, well, well yeah. how do I keep pushing through, you know, now that that Tokyo may or may not happen or that it's a year later and um, you know and so uh, you know again I've gone through that through my career and I've gone through ups and downs and challenges and so COVID is you know has been a challenge mm -hmm. but it's just been another one of those things in in an athletic career that you have to overcome and find ways to motivate and get right. through and um, you know, and you come out the other side and you, you find, you know, different races to do and new ways to push. Were there points th this last couple of years where you were wondering if you were going to continue on? And yes, definitely. Um, obviously I, I'm 41 right now right. and, um, you know, for the last couple of years, people have been asking me, well, when are you going to retire and when do you think you're going to stop racing? And you know, two years ago, I was like, well, I, I want to, I'm enjoying it. I'm still You're wanting still competitive. to push. Yeah, I still want to push myself. I can still, yeah. you know, I still enjoy racing and, you know, but then another year goes on and a year without racing goes on and those questions happen more often. Right. And, then, and then you start to look inwardly as well and go, yeah, how, how long do I want to keep doing this? And if I can't race, um, do I love training that much to <laughs> yeah. just do it for the sake of doing it? And um, so the, the last two years has been really hard. Yeah. Um, you know, you see f for some younger athletes, it's been phenomenal because they've been able to train and, and consistently learn, and learn how to train and, 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 um, and that's really become true. Better athletes. Yes. Um, you know, but then the flip side is older athletes like myself is we need to keep racing, especially me. I, I need to race in order to stay in shape and, and get in shape as well. I'm not just to go and train for three months and then come out and bang a, a great race. No. Um, well, you you did, know. Didn't you do four Ironmans in a year? Uh, yeah, but that, that was, <laughs> that was a while ago. Exactly. You know, and, but it's just like, cause I could race and then I could recover, yeah. then I could do a, you know, a couple halves and then I'd race another Ironman. Right. And, and so I, I just, I was able to stay sharp and fresh, right. but, um, you know, so for the, the COVID years, it's just, it's been a lot of training and, um, that gets and, old. And, and, and it's and, but hard. But that's almost like studying all the time and no exams. Well, yeah. And, and imagine studying for 20 years. No. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> I've done a lot of studying. <laughs> I, 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 I like the writing the tests part. <laughs> yeah. I know a lot of stuff. I don't need to study no, so no, much anymore. I don't need to open the book. Uh, yeah. yeah. The books. So, yeah. I so it's that. been hard to not be able to just go out and, and race. And so, but I made it through and, you know, this fall I was like, okay, let's get some racing in. Let's see if we can race back into the form I was in yeah and um, for me personally I've decided that next year I'm I'm all in um, I'm gonna try and execute a, a regular season of racing because it, it seems like that's gonna happen yep I think it um, this past year it was still wasn't. sporadic yeah, yeah. Um, but I think with racing this fall I can push myself back into fitness um, I've already seen that you know I'm getting back to where I was um, so yeah, so next year it's, I'm all in and I want to, you know, execute a good season. I want to get back to Kona 
and um, you know push it for one more year, and then and then we'll see what happens then. What's uh, your best finish at Kona? Uh, was the first year, whereas it's ninth. Yeah, that's right. I know so, you had a top ten in there. Yeah, so I, I I still feel like I could improve on that. Yeah. Because I ran a you know over three hour marathon. Yeah, at that you're, time. A, you're a you're a high two forties guy. Yeah, mid two forties. So so yeah, I'd love to go back to Kona and and run you know two forty five. How have you how yeah two forty five is the, is where you should be. Yeah. What have you uh, uh, as you like you said forty one years old? How have you had to change in terms of your training to age? Um, well, or have I, you? Y- I, there definitely has been. It's it's funny. We we've made some changes. Uh, you know, my coach Lance Watson. Oh, yeah. I've worked with him for 25 years. Yep. Uh, so we know each other really well, and we know what works. And so we've we've tried some new things. Um, you know, okay, you're older, so we need to you know a little more do, recovery. Do this or, and, yeah, yeah. But then at times I've gone. I, I don't I don't know if we need to do that. I don't feel like I am old <laughs> where no, yeah. where I need to take that much rest or I need to drop off that Mm. much, you know, from the intervals or whatever. And so we've kind of gone back to go, okay, well maybe let's, yeah, go back and do more intensity. Um, so the main thing is, is it's just placing things in the right spot. Mm. I, I I can't back up day after day after day. Um, I, I used to be able to do, you know, five hard days out of seven a week. Right. Um, I just can't do that. I I can do a couple of days in a row and then I've got to take a day, you know, easier. Um, so especially when I'm doing hard intervals, Mm. um, it just, it just takes more toll and it takes more time to recover. I can still hit the numbers. I can still do the work. I just got to adjust. Yeah. So, so, you know, a seven day week, you know, it's, we're actually just stretching it out a little bit. And sometimes like, the, the cycle is not on seven days. It's, it's like actually a nine. eight days yeah, or nine, nine yeah. days to yep. accommodate the extra rest. Love it. Yeah. Hey, we're going to have fun out here on Saturday. It's going to be great to see you. I bet a lot of these guys have never raced you before. Uh, well, yeah, what I've, what I'm learning is I'm now the oldest guy at every race. So it's, <laughs> <laughs> so it's fun to look down and be uh, like, okay, know. Well, these, all these young guys. All right, let's, see what, let's see what they got. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah, no, there's a few of us rolling oh, yeah. around. Well, and the deal is that, uh, you know, when you do it right, when you, 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 you you've, it's like you haven't fallen off, right? Yeah. If you, you, you maintain the discipline that you've had all these years and there's no reason that 40 is, you know, you've got, uh, our the cyclist who's coming in at 40 years old, Adam, and yeah. you know, so I'm like, dude, you're 40, but your legs haven't been beat up at all. You've yeah. been riding. Yeah, right? exactly. You're, 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 you're like, impact. you're like yeah. a 15 year old learning yeah. to run. Yeah, you're gonna be fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So no, you just you just keep you know working and you keep focusing on recovery. And we've got so many things to help us with recovery now. And yeah, um, and and more other new to do you use? Uh, I'm sure power meters. It's everything that's out there. Use every toy that's there. Yeah. Well, yeah, and and then and then also just you, as you get older, you you just know your body better. Um, so you, you actually don't need some of those tools as much because right. you can just you, intuitively internally, you know, no, okay. Well, I need to back it off today or, okay, no, I can actually step on the pedals a little harder today because I I'm fresh and, and I know I can. Love and it. so it's just using knowledge. Yeah. Perfect. Hey, Brent, have a great one. Awesome. Thanks for Brent having McMahon me. has been our guest, everybody again, breakfast with Bob from Clash Daytona. Hold on. We'll be right back.